Ladies and gentlemen of the media, welcome to the Orlando Pirates uh, versus Amazulu Post Match Press Conference. We are joined by the away team head coach, uh, Coach Ben McCarthy. Welcome, sir. Uh, coach, if you may please just uh, give us a brief summary of the match from your perspective. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're well. Um, yes, no, I think um, very interesting encounter. Um, Amazulu out the blocks, very quick, very fast. Great start, I think early first th three minutes into the game I think Memela uh, showed a bit more respect to his old team because I think he had a fantastic opportunity one against one against the goalkeeper and you would always fancy him to stick that away but you know he took the difficult option by trying to dribble and allow Pirates players to come back in so a brilliant opportunity gone begging and then two minutes later um, very similar circumstances similar similar opportunity created and then this time Mela very much more clinical in front of goal so yeah you go one note up and now you think your team is going to keep that momentum and, and 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 keep pirates on the back foot because yeah they have to come out and, and and bring the game to us which will allow the game to open up but then i think we just went into into defensive mode and then we started sitting back and dropping off and allowing Pirates to play and then the, the quality of the players that they have of course they're going to come in and um and and accept the challenge you know you dropping off and then yes that kind of opened a way for them and then they found their rangers they found the passing rangers their movements was really good from the likes of lords um um and 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 uh, the, the attacking players from pirates and then it's only a matter of time, you know, we're switching off, allowing players to run in behind us and then a ball cut back inside where I still think maybe we could have defended or even prevented the goal because it wasn't the best, the best hit shot. Um, and it gets past the goalkeeper and then they get themselves back into the game 1-1. One, one, and yeah, and then I think first half, then it kind of evened up out itself 1-1 one, one, and you think, okay, you've done enough to to get the goal but disappointment with the way we defended and with the way we dropped off and then second half yes pirates in that momentum that they had the first half they came out and then a bit of a lucky break there because two players going for the same ball and at the ricochet and it falls very kindly for the striker who's in, in excellent form he scored two goals um um against maruno gala no the previous game Marumo Gallants and now he gets another brace against Amazulu so yeah and um, we allowed him the space and then he, he, he tucks it away clinically 2-1 to Pirates and then obviously they with the quality the caliber of team that they have you know they, they, they try and shift the ball but momentum swung back in our way and I think the majority of the clear-cut chances in the game we were the ones that created them but you don't win a football match if you create the chances that we do and you don't score. You know, you don't put the ball past the goalkeeper, um, unopposed open situation and you hit the post, you hit the crossbar. Um, and it's one of those days and it's been this, the story of our season thus far. You know, we've played a lot of the times we were very good, efficient, but yeah, the lack of killer instincts, the lack of finishing uh, that that that's been hampering us, and yeah, Empire is holding on for dear life because um, it was an onslaught towards the end. But you know what? They deserved it. They worked for it. They've taken the chances, and they defended in a manner that you know we didn't open them up and we didn't take our chances. So they they take all three points. And then somewhat disappointed from outside because after a fantastic victory in midweek, you know, against the, the champions, and then you come ago, uh, against a very, very, very top Orlando Pirates side, and you could have gotten away with maybe a point or even all three points, and you don't. So you rule your chances, and that's what happened. So congratulations to Orlando Pirates for taking the victory and for holding on you know, to secure place and then finishing second, going to the Christmas break, so not bad, yeah? Bom dia, patrão, o Benny McCarthy, fala português. Olá, pá, estás bem? 
boy or boy not. Uh, a coach, um, unlucky on the loss. Uh, 20, 20 games played this season, 12 draws, 5 wins, 3 losses. What, what is your report card up until this point? And secondly, you've got a very, very second, a very busy second half of the season. Uh, are you looking to dip into the transfer window with, with, with the continental football for Amazul as well? Thank you. Uh, yes, most definitely. I think I'm desperate for new faces. I'm desperate for refreshments in the team. And I mean, quality players, because you see, 12 draws is not normal for any team. You know, when you play the way that we play, we play expensive football. Um, and where you want to dominate op op opposition, and you manage to do so, but uh, I mean, the final third is where we disappoint ourselves. So having 12 draws and from that 12 draws, I think three or four of them was where I would say mm, maybe we didn't deserve to win. But it, it, it's eight too many draws for my liking and for what we want, you know, we want to achieve as a club, as a football club. Um, so, yeah, so I think we threw away so many points this season. And I think we're going to come to rule our misses come end of the season because I think the mindset that we have, we want to succeed, we want to do well. And um, we've just thrown away far too many points, you know. So so hopefully the club can come to the party and, and, and they also play their part in, in, in assisting and in, in bringing in some quality players that the team really do need. Because yes, when you look at things like, yeah, we've done exceptionally well last season and this season but yeah you need to you need to keep everybody on their toes you need to keep everybody uh, honest and at the, at the moment there's just a, a level of complacency and there's absolutely nothing you can do the players can only give you as much as they can because you know we've reached a level where where we are and we, we we're gonna need some assistance in taking us to the next level and and when i say assistance and that means a couple of new faces and, and, and good quality players. Good evening, coach. My name is Sobri Chabalala from the Big R. Thank you, Tandy, for giving me the opportunity. Coach, I think having gone to uh, Christmas time, remember when you started, it was a little bit problematic. I'm sure you are content now seeing where you are now in terms of the position and you're doing quite well, I must say that. Um, since you say you need to beef up, which position do you think needs to be beefed up? That's one. Secondly, I want to know what happened to Major, although we know him as Majoro. Uh, what happened to him? I think those are the players. The players. I can't answer for them. You know, they're the ones who goes out on the training pitch. They're the ones who goes out on the field and select themselves. We just guide them. So, but he picked up an injury. Um, yesterday, um, we had small recovery session <coughs> and he picked up an injury. So yeah, we couldn't count with him. So he dropped out of the, the side. So that's why we had um, one of the MDC players um, coming in back in his place um, because of injury. And um, Uh, position. The position that you like to beef up. The uh, positions, obviously, I think it's, it's it's clear that we need a playmaker. We need someone, you know, we need someone to to assist in those creativity because yes, we're creating, but we're not creating enough as much. And and I think we need we need um Untuli needs backup. He needs help, you know. Um, so we need somebody who's goal hungry who's aggressive and um, when a goal scoring opportunity presents itself, then he has the hunger, he has the desire to want to get there, whether it's a beautiful goal or a uh, tap in, but I need, I need a hungry player who's hungry to score goals, 15, 20 goals a season. I know it sounds, it sounds kind of impossible, but they are out there, you know, um, so Yes, and I also definitely think in in defense we definitely need, especially with losing a player like the likes of Mabaliso, 
that was giving us such an unbelievable outlet going up and down that 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 wing. And now that you don't have, you haven't replaced Mabelisa with 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 the quality that that he that he brought to the team. And you kind of see players like uh, Mulenga's performance is not the same because he always had over his over his shoulder he had a Mabelisa that was flying up that flank and then giving him options to make it easier. And at the moment we're lacking that both sides of of of, of our fullbacks. We're not getting we're not getting there and we're playing with a centre back playing at right back sometimes, you know, with Shus Gumedi. So so I think that is also becoming a problem. And the fact that um Mahaula is 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 running up the minutes every game, every game, every game. Um it would be nice to also get another extra um extra holding midfielder with the same um characteristics as Mahaula. Um so yeah, so you're looking for four or five players, um four or five really good players. And when you look at the likes of Orlando Pirates, left back Bongani Sam, you know, sitting in the sitting on the stands, world class. Um Innocent Maela hasn't been involved for so many matches world class um Paseco Marco the list can just go on so when you have that kind of ability when you have that kind of depth in your squad you know um you smiling all the way every game to three points because you know you know you covered in most positions so but unfortunately we don't have to we don't have that luxury and that's the difference between the bigger teams and the teams that's that's aspiring to be like them. We have to take a leap of their books and you know it's going to be costly. It's going to be heck hefty on the pockets, but for where you want your team to be, you got to you got to show and you got to show you got to show me the money, son. You got to take out and then produce to have the quality and then it will it it will show on the football pitch. Tours, you see, you had your hand up. Are you still interested in asking a question? Hi, Coach Benny. Lorenzo here from the Times. Um, one of your most more important players, Siasitebe, has been linked with a, a move away from the club. Um, in the last two games, he hasn't played. Um, is, can you shed some light on that? Is there any truth that you know, he could be, have been seen last in his Amazulu shirt, or do you still see him as an important part of your squad moving forward into the second half of the season? Thank you. I also seen um, a little write up on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, about Sitebe. But as far as I'm concerned, is Sitebe um, he suffered he suffered an incident in the last game where he's breathing, he struggled to breathe, and then obviously. Um, safety precautions measure because for me, a footballer's health is far more important than a game of football or winning or losing. You know, so I think um, we took precautions measure because he, he he was struggling and he's not a player that struggles. And then obviously he's gone he's gone to some examinations and that, and then they kind of found out um, there was irregular irregularly. Um, heart heart rate m monitor measures and there so obviously you know just for safety because you've seen healthy healthy athletes they drop drop down and lose their lives <coughs> with cardio arrest so cardiac arrest so we didn't want to take the chances so we took precaution measurements and we we, we took Sitebe out, not because of injury or that, it was just safety measures and the heart is no joke. So, you know, he's going, he's busy going through some tests and, and medical medical uh, evaluations and hopefully he'll be back soon in the new year, in the new season. And yes, he's very much part of our plans, very much. And the club is working 24-7 um, to try and, and sort out the situation. But 
the end of the day, it's down to the player. You know, if a player, if a player has bigger ambition and he elsewhere he thinks the grass is greener on the other side, elsewhere, then what will you to do? Because you know, you don't want to stand in anyone's anyone's way. Because we want the best for the football club, we want the best for the players, we want the best for everyone. And if a player is maybe getting advice from outside people that it's best to go there than to stay here, then so be it, you know. Um, we move on, there's hungry young talent that we can use, so so that's the situation. But he's out because of just um, minor heart problems, but he will be 100% when we get back in the new year. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Evening, colleagues. Evening, Coach. Uh, this is really a Coach. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, mine is just a quick one. Um, I know we are going to the break in terms of league, but uh, on Tuesday, there's the CAF draw, uh, CAF Champions League draw. Um, I just want to find out from you, one, um, uh, did you think that you guys would get this far? Number two, um, what does it mean for you um, to getting this far in the competition? And lastly, um, how far would you like to go? Thank you. Um, yes, I think when I joined the club, I, I was very ambitious. And I said my my goal and my aim was to, to, to unsettle the top four in the league. And I think it was possible with... The mentality that I have, the mindset, uh, the winning mentality, that you know, that um, the passion. So yeah, that's what I installed in the team, in the players, and we we sort of just went for it, you know. And and when you have, when you have the craziness that I have, and um, animate animated on the touchline and that, and players know if you're not performing, if you're playing under par, if you're not playing to the level you should be playing. <laughs> I ain't the easiest guy to play for. I'm the nicest guy that you can get, you know, but just do your job, do what you're supposed to do. Then we're fine. And we did that and we had imminent success, you know. And then we said, now that we've reached second place and we into the, um, the CAF Champions League knockout stages, why stop there? We continue with that, that mindset um, that we want to achieve. We want to be amongst the best teams in, in on the continent. Um, you know, so we wanted to go and qualify as well for the for the CAF Champions League. Group stage is not we finished second after such a hard fought year season in the PSL and then you don't want to reach the group stages. So then we've achieved that and we've qualified for the group stages. And now in the group stages we're just hoping for a nice favorable draw like teams that we can go and compete and teams that we can't, that we know we're not going to shame ourselves. But when you're in the group stages now, anything is, there's everything to play for. And, you know, you want to go all the way. You want to, you want to win it. When you're in it, you in, you in any competition that you play, you want to win it. What's the point of just participating and, 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 and wasting everyone's time? When you participate, it's participating because you think you've got a shout at winning it. And that's what we want to do. So, yeah, we know it's impossible, especially after seeing yesterday Pizzo and Al Ali winning the Super Cup, you know, um, coming from from a goal down and then winning it on penalties. So, so yeah, so you know what you're going to be up against. You're going to be up against formidable opponents. But it's a challenge for myself as a young coach. It should be a challenge for these players also to play against players that you're going to see playing in the World Cup with Egypt and, 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 and so forth. So it's, it's all there to play for and we, we've got more to gain than, than what we can, what we lose. The end of the day, we only are Mazulu and I'm a Zulu sleeping giant that's slowly starting to wake up. But yeah, we, we, we're far from where we want to be because, you know, there's teams with far bigger and um, financial resources and backings than what we have. Thank you, Sister Andy. Evening, colleagues. Evening, coach. Uh, coach, how frustrating is it, you know, that your, your players can't finish considering 
they're surrounded by the best finishers South Africa has seen. You know, because I'm sure you practice it. Why is it not getting through? Thank you. No, because it's just the way the human body is. Human beings are like that. Just because you've got two players who's played at the highest level, who's proven goal scorers, but it doesn't mean that because we we with players every day um, that they're going to be exactly what what we were. Um, we we one of a we one 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 of a kind. Myself, I'm a one of a kind player. Nomvete is a one of a kind player. He's different generation, um, different instincts than the modern day player today. And back in our days, we didn't need coaches to motivate us. We didn't need coaches to tell us, you know, what you have to practice and that. We used to do that ourselves because at the end of the day, it's our own, it's our careers. It's not the coach's career. The coach has his own career. He's got his own ambition where he wants to end up. But you as a player, you can only do yourself the favor by by practice, 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 practice. Don't make perfect, but it certainly makes you better. And if you don't practice, how are you going to get better? And then you wonder why it's difficult for South African players to score goals on a consistent level because we don't practice enough, you know? So we don't we don't perfect, we don't better our craft. And when you don't better your craft, what do you expect? You're going to stay average, you're going to stay mediocre, you're going to stay there. And then people are always going to say, yeah, but you work with that. Working with, with top coaches doesn't make you a top player. You still have to go out there and do the job, do the business. And if you see, you know, when when players miss chances the way they do, then you ask yourself, okay, yes, these these coaches are, are, are working with them, but what is it that the players do that can help themselves better? What can they do better, you know, to make it there? And, and you practice and practice and practice until you can't, until you can't practice anymore, then it just becomes part of who you are. When you're on the pitch, when you see a situation, you know what to do because you've you tire yourself during practice doing it on a consistent basis but we don't we don't do that you know and and that is the problem so unfortunately them working with myself and Nomvete doesn't ain't gonna help them you know if they don't want to help themselves unfortunately I could tough luck on the defeat um, however You've been now at the club for slightly just over a year now. How would you sum up the 2021, the first half of the year, as we already know, it, you, you shocked the South African football fraternity. The second half of the year, there was a bit of inconsistency, which you have grieved upon in, the, in public, in the media as well. But, you know, sitting down there in the chair, um, with it being this last match for the year, how would you sum up? I guess your experience and, and everything that has gone right and wrong at Amazulu. Thanks. Um, I think any coach in my situation would not be sitting here with a smile on his face because I don't think anyone would have been able to come in. Doesn't matter, they can say what they want to. No coach would have came into Amazulu and done what we've done. No one. No one. Believe you me. So Wherever we finish sixth, seventh in the league at this moment in point, for Amazulu, this is the best that they will get. You know, not that I'm arrogant and that, but I'm just telling because we know as, as coaches, as a technical team, what we have, what we work with. So for what we've achieved is, is, is remarkable. And we should be getting, we should, we should, we should get knighted, you know, sir. Benny Makatini, Sir <laughs> Josephs, Sir Siabonga Nomvete, Sir Vasili Manusakis. You know, we should get knighted for what we've done with Amazulu because it is what it is. You know, so for me, I'm proud of what we've achieved, what we've achieved with, 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 with the team. And, um, and I think. There's still plenty more to come, but obviously, with a bit of help, would be nice. Would be nice if, if we are backed and if we are supported, and we are given 
the ammunition to then take this team to the next level because you see this Amazulu team ain't no push over for anyone any team you know before they were relegation battlers standard standard guaranteed Amazulu top four top four from bottom natural they survived the drop and that now speaking people know Amazulu yeah 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 you yeah. you in for a fight my friend on the sidelines of the coaches on the pitch is a completely different Amazulu Amazulu is a different animal now you know but still as as much as we think we are different animal some clubs just have um better structure than what we have and when you have when we don't have the structure of Orlando Pirates, we don't have the structure of Memelo de Sundowns or Kaiser Chiefs, but ask them if it's a joke playing against Amazulu. So I'm, I'm super proud of what we achieved at Amazulu. Um, and I still say again, no coach in this league would have done what we do. No one. Even the, the three wise men at Orlando at the melody sound give them amazulu i want to see if they achieve what we achieve so yep so i think maybe better questions or definitely phrase phrase because yeah i'm gonna also get some smart you know because finishing second with with what we have and um no budget no no new players coming in just three players we picked up here and there and then to still do that knock the champions off their perch give them the first loss of the season orlando pirates are run for their money so which amazulu coach can tell you that or which coach other in the league for any other team can tell you that they can do that to orlando pirates sundown skies chiefs you know we've played each team pirates twice a draw and a loss Kaiser Chiefs, two draws, Sundowns, a loss and a win. So we've played the top teams twice and we weren't humiliated, you know. So, and Amazulu knows the relegation battle ain't for them while we here, uh, but it might not be there for that long. Thank you very much, people. Let Have a wonderful Christmas. Be safe. That night we've come to the conclusion of our <coughs> first round of the press conference with uh, Coach Ben McCarthy. Thank you, sir. We'll be back shortly with Orlando Pirates and Coach. Thank you.